Uh, you, you get tired of it. I'm trying to do the best job I possibly can, and the only people I need to listen to are the people in my organization. That's it. But I, I, I get tired of, 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 of being nitpicked, and I get tired of being criticized unjustly. Why don't they talk to me first before they do it? Okay? And get my viewpoints and my feelings, and then make a determination. It's a tough situation. I know that I get criticized for it. Uh, we've got a lot of people here that haven't managed and won any games in the big leagues, but they know everything, you know? They really do. I, I think they should try to put the uniform on and try this job and see how, how, uh, uh, how they like it when they get criticized unjustly. <laughs> this hour... <laughs> I love Krabby Lou. This hour is brought to you by the Harp Open. Hello, we ain't got time for much. I'm Terry Bors. I'm Dan Bernstein, and the apparent target of Lou's oh, more than the apparent target. is with us on the score, our baseball expert, Steve Stone. He's got enough troubles with the White Sox. <laughs> Take right that, Stoney. Okay, guys, how you doing? Good. Oh, we're good, man. How are you? Actually, it appears that Lou was a bit grumpy today. <laughs> I came to the ballpark enjoying myself, had a good time, was over on the Cubs side. I talked with uh, Derek Lee before the game. I had uh, a talk with Ryan Terrio. I talked with uh, uh, a lot of the Cub players. I talked with Rudy Jaramillo about some of the Cubs that are hitting and some that aren't. And then I went to sit on the other side, is the side that I am employed by. And, um, and then all of a sudden, all of these reporters came herding across, and they wanted my opinion as to what Lou said. And then I, I did hear what Lou said, and apparently um, he's getting a bit thin-skinned in his old age. But, you know, the, I think the one area, guys, where everything is fine, everybody's entitled to their opinion, um, the one thing that I think that he didn't realize was that you don't have to manage in the major leagues or be a GM in the major leagues to have an opinion. What makes baseball the great game it is is that everybody has an opinion. Oh, I agree. I, I just found the whole thing more amusing than anything else because I listened to the question, Stoney, and I didn't hear anything there that was like so so leading on or demanding of a question. It was just like he was just sort of waiting to do it. I, I mean, he was just lurking in the weeds. It, it started out okay. I saw the whole thing. And then all of a sudden, he's all over your ass. Well, the question that Fred Mitchell asked, amazingly enough, was... How do you think Jake Peavy will adjust to right. life in the American League? And from that, he went in and decided that he was going to go on the offensive against me. Now, first of all, I thought he handled Colvin terrific today. With two outs in the seventh inning and nobody on, he came in, he hit a double. He was a non-factor in the game. And then they went on and scored some runs. They might have been able to use him later. By the way, he did not start today because Fukudome had a very good career average, just four for six against Peavy. Mm -hmm. The problem was that was at another time in another Jake Peavy universe. That wasn't here today where you had Fukudome who hit, I think, 370 in April and hit about 250 or so in May, and he's doing what he does every year. He falls down the cliff. Eventually what's going to happen, whether Lou likes it or not, is that Tyler Colvin is going to play every day. I understand the five outfielder situation. Basically what he has is four outfielders for two spots because you want Bird to play center field every day. And so then you have to rotate. And for me, Fukudome is not part of the Cubs' future despite the fact he was given an egregiously large contract and he's making $14 million both this year and next year. Tyler Colvin is the Cubs' future and he has to get 25 to 30 at-bats a week. If he can get him in the minor leagues, that's fine. If he can get him in the major leagues, that's fine. But sitting on a major league bench is not going to make him a better player. That's why Starlin Castro plays every day. Jason Hayward plays every day. Uh, Stubbs from Cincinnati plays every day. And the guys that they bring up play every day mm -hmm. if they think they have a future. And there's no doubt Colvin has a future. This report is brought to you by the Chicagoland Acura Dealer Association. Steve Stone also brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts, the official coffee of the Mully and Hanley show. Steve Stone, he's got enough problems doing what he does with the White Sox. What job has he had in baseball besides talking on, the, on, 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 on television or radio? What, is he, what has he done? Why isn't he a farm director and bring some kids around? Why isn't he a general manager? 
Why hasn't he ever put the, 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 the uniform on and been a pitching coach? Why hasn't he been a field manager? There's 30 teams out there that could use a guy's expertise like that. You know? Take dinner. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess the, you're not allowed to not want to. Well, first of all, I have been offered a few of those jobs and turned them down. But number one, being a farm director is not the area that I chose to pursue. And now Lou, when he was out of a job, chose television in which to resurrect his career. I never criticized his television work. I also have never said on six times in a row. So, I mean, that's one of the things. Look, I've always respected Lou as a manager. In fact, what gets lost in the translation is when a lot of people wanted Joe Girardi four years ago, I was one of the guys who said the job should be Lou Pinella's because he's won before, and this Cub team should be ready to win. And so I was a big supporter of Lou's. And by the way, I've been talking about Tyler Colvin, the fact that he should play for the last month. I'm not sure why this came to right. the, the head today, but I'm not the Lone Ranger here. There's a lot of Cub fans that believe he should play. There's a lot of media people that believe he should play. And again, when you look around at all the first-year players in both leagues, Mike Stanton from Florida, for instance, was brought Playing up. It. He wasn't brought up to sit. No. He was brought up to play. Ike Davis. R Ike Davis brought up to play. Every guy who their team believes is going to be a star, and the Cubs believe Tyler Colvin is going to be a star, they're all brought up to play. If Lou's got a problem with five outfielders and he's got a problem benching Fukudome, well, guess what? Bench Fukudome and play your future. Fukudomi is not your future. Tyler Colvin is. Well, he said, yeah, he, he used the, the dusty argument about, well, what do you got to do? I got five outfielders. I'm not turning my back on anybody. Boy, the Cub managers just don't like you, I Steve I said Stone. I'm going to try to get Colvin there as much as I can, and, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Uh, Colvin's a fine young player, and his time is going to come. Unfortunately, I've got five, five people here that, uh, uh, that deserve to play also. Today, Colvin's not in the lineup. No, I'm talking about the people. That, I, I'm only, look. The media here in this in this town, for the most part, they're really, really good, and I enjoy working with them, and especially the people that work with me on a on a day-to-day -day basis. But why should I be? Why should I be? Uh, 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 what, what, talk to me. Get my feelings. Get my viewpoints. All right. And then if you don't agree with me, say what you want. But at least give me the courtesy of defending myself and giving my explanations on why things are done and not done. That's all I ask. This is my black ass. So explain it then. What's the explanation? You've got an opportunity right there. You've got reporters right in front of you. Explain why you can't find a way to play a guy you think is going to be a star of the future. And first of all, guys, what Lou said here, he has also said before, was in the USA Today. Lou said that he wants to be fair to all five outfielders. Right. Guess what? They are 27 and 34. Now, they can still make a run at it, but this is not a team playing very well. The three teams below them, they went and just played and lost two of three to Pittsburgh, to Houston, and to Milwaukee. And so when I look at the team, I realize they're underachieving, and Lou says he wants to be fair to his outfielders. The major leagues is about winning. It's not about being fair. When you start to be fair, then all of a sudden you find out at the end of the year when you've lost and you're going home like 21 other teams, they're not going to say, boy... I know that we're out of the playoffs. I know it was a disappointing year. I know that we let down Cub fans. However, boy, Lou was fair to those outfielders. Nobody's going to care how fair he was to the outfielders. They're just going to they're just going to care if you're building for the future and you got a guy here who seems to be able to hit the ball and hit the ball for power. He's got as many home runs as Fukudome has and he has just a little over half the at-bats that Fukudome does. It appears to me he's got a chance to be a power hitter. Fukudome will never be a power hitter. We're being told that a distressed Lou Pinella is currently standing on a bus with Patrick Kane swinging out of a champagne <laughs> bottle in an effort to drown his sorrows. He, he and Kaner and Kaner's cousin are all going out tonight <laughs> just because. And they all hate Steve Stone. Right, all of them. That's and there's another thing I'm going to say. I've won over 1,800 games in the manager, and I'm not a damn dummy. That I can tell you. Okay. Well, the thing there is, boys, I never called them a dummy. others that have won more games than me. So I guess I think I know what the hell I'm doing. I just want to know how many playoff games he's won as a Cub. <laughs> we, we didn't, there's no way that the Chicago Cubs played, paid Lou Pinella 
on what he did with Cincinnati in 90, which was terrific. He went wire to wire. They won a world championship. Mm -hmm. He won 116 games with Seattle. They got taken out in the playoffs. They didn't pay Lou for any of those things. They paid Lou to manage a baseball team, to get to the postseason, which he did twice, to win the first round, the second round, and get to the World Series. He has not been able to win one game in the playoffs. Now, those are facts. Those are not opinions. That's the way it is. And I still believe that Lou is a terrific manager, and he is one of the best around. And the fact that he's won over 1,800 games, I think, is wonderful. But none of that counts. What counts is what he does with the Chicago Cubs. That's what counts. That's what he's being paid for. And by the way, when you come to a big media city, and he's been in New York, he should know that. He doesn't believe that anybody who hasn't been a general manager or a manager should have an opinion. That's where he got on real shaky ground. Because the beauty of this game is that we all have opinions. Everybody in this lounge that I'm in right now has an opinion. And they get to voice it. That's because there is no black and white in baseball. There's shades of gray. And what makes it the great game it is, is that the people at home can sit and they can have an opinion. Lou has the final say-so. But the people at home aren't paid $4 million to manage the Chicago Cubs. Lou is. So he gets the final say. If it works, it's good. If it doesn't work, it's not good. But for Lou to believe that you need to have a front office job or put on a uniform and be a manager to have an opinion, that's where I think he ran afoul of this particular argument. I just think it's a strange decision by Lou Pinella at this point with yep. what's going on and, and to draw the focus back to these battles, if a manager tries to battle somebody with a microphone, they always lose. There's there's no good that can come of it. And I, I don't know what set Lou off. I don't know what... Imp you, this has been going, and you said this a month ago yeah, about Tyler Colvin. Yeah. I, I just don't understand why Lou would decide to do this now. Well, I, I think, number one, that Paul Sullivan had an article in the paper in which it kind of laid out in black and white things that I had said <clears throat> on, uh, with David Kaplan, actually. And I do believe it goes a little deeper than that, guys. We did a little research. Lou was 3 for 11 against me lifetime. <laughs> he had a double and two singles. He didn't drive in any runs. I struck him out three times. And, you know, that's below his lifetime average. I think he still might be a little bit bitter about our head-to-head -head confrontation. <laughs> this hour is brought to you by the Harp. Well, but we are visiting with our guy, Steve Stone. He's at Vines on Clark, as you can probably tell. Either that or he's got the loudest house in the city. Right. I, I want to ask you quickly about sure. the White Sox little brouhaha with Kenny and Ozzy. Yes. Had heard Ozzy before the game today as well. And the more he talked, the more he sounded like things weren't really good at all. I, I mean, that's what it sounded like to me. I don't think it ever has to be great between a general manager and a manager. I just think it has to be workable. And at this point, it seems to be workable. As far as Ozzy's concerned, he feels that, you know, he can only play the players that Kenny gets him. Kenny gets the players and then hands them to Ozzy to manage them. That's a division of labor and management. I also believe that a general manager has a much longer view than a manager has because a manager has immediacy. A general manager has that same immediacy, but he also has to look down the road some. And so you have to go within your budget. Kenny had to cut back some of the budget. He'll probably have to cut back a little bit more. And as far as the inner workings of Ozzy and Kenny, that's something to be dealt with with guys at a higher pay grade than I have. But quite obviously, it's not the best situation around. It's also not the worst I've ever seen. But if you were Jerry Reinsdorf and you knew that, that, that organizations that operate like this when it's happening this publicly, it, it's, it never ends up being good. There's going to be an end game here at some point. How would you handle it other than getting these guys in a room and saying, listen, kids, play nice? Well, I think it's a very difficult decision for Jerry because, number one, Jerry thinks very highly of both of these guys because they both team together to bring him the one thing that he truly wanted, which was a World Series championship in 2005. Jerry doesn't forget things like that. And so he's very loyal to both of these guys. And when push comes to shove, I'm not sure which side he's going to come down on. I do know one thing, and it, does involve, it doesn't involve either of these guys. They have a very good assistant general manager in Rick Hahn. I think he's brilliant. I think he's learning baseball a whole lot better. I think he, one day in the not-too-distant future, I mean the immediate distant future, is going to be a general manager. Now, I'm not sure where that's going to be, 
I'm not sure if Jerry knows where it's going to be or if anybody does, but Rick is qualified to do that job. And so we'll just have to see how this plays out. And we'll have to see with the minor leagues getting better under Buddy Bell, the organization drafting better under Doug Lauman, everything being a little more talented than they've been in years past. And I know they caught lightning in a bottle in 05, but it's been a while since then. And this is a what for, have you done for me lately game. So we'll have to see how it plays out, boys. This All right, Steve Stone. Stone Report is brought to you by the Chicagoland Acura Dealer Association and by Dunkin' Donuts, the official coffee of the Mully and Hanley Show. All right, Stone, as always, we appreciate it, my friend. And uh, Lou is waiting for you in the pool. He's got a margarita ready for you. Thanks, guys. I think I'm a step faster to either side than Lou. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment on WSCR The Score.